Very good morning to everybody. We've got about a minute before we get started. So um, if you have a friend, a relative, someone who should be in this session on, um, there's got to be more to life, the abundant life that we talk about here at Centonomy. This is a good time to give them a call, send them the link that you receive so that they can be able to watch. Tell them if they, if they can't get into this room session, they're well, more than welcome to get into um, our Facebook or our, uh, our YouTube channel and they'll be able to watch and participate just like you are here on Zoom. Well done. First of all, to everybody who's shown up, um, everyone who's shown up on time, that is excellent. This is um, simply showing your willingness for growth, your willingness to um, to build yourself up for the life that you want. So welcome, 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 everybody. It's now 10 o'clock. So we're just getting ready to get started now on the program for today. As I said, in case you do have a friend, a relative, a family member, somebody you think who might benefit from this session, do send them the link, tell them to get on YouTube, get onto Facebook. Um, and if they have the link for this, that they can be able to join us even as we get started now. Um, so just for uh, those who are here in the Zoom space for our Zoom etiquette, kindly keep your cameras and microphones off during the session. Um, this will just allow us to focus on the speaker who's going, we've got an amazing lineup of speakers who are going to be with us over the next uh, couple of minutes. And so we want to hear them. We want to be able to focus on them. So I encourage you, if you can, please keep your camera off as well as your uh, microphone. And then we'll be able to hear and focus on what we're going to do. God willing, we'll have some time for some questions later on, even as we, as we go forward. All right. So for everyone who's here and who has, who has tuned in, well done. Well done. Welcome to Centonomy. Um, and we're really glad to have you here with us. Today, we are focusing on an area that is essentially core to our mission. It is core to who we are at Centonomy. And, um, and so I'm really happy to have you here because I think this is gonna be life-changing for you. It's gonna allow you to begin to experience what it means to have abundance. And we're gonna define what abundance is here. We're gonna define what it means for you, God willing. And then we'll hear from other people's experiences as they grow in their, abundance, in their abundant life, all right? So I hope you're ready for it. If you are, kindly in the, in the chat box, please type where you're, you are at the moment in the world, because I can see some names from all around Africa and around the world. So if you can type in the chat box or in the comments, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube in the comments, just say, hey, um, which city are you in? And because my geography is not as it used to be, if you can tell us which country it is as well, it would be great to be able to see that. So quickly in the chat box, just let us know where you are, you're joining us from. It would be really great to see. Hey, 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 Alex in the city of Kitengela. Excellent, excellent. We've got quite a few people here in, from Nairobi. Hey, how are you doing, Linda? I hope you're well, Joseph. I hope you're well. Mwebesa, all the way from Kampala. Welcome, welcome. Nathaline, I hope I said that, or Nathaline, I hope I said that correctly. Welcome from Kampala. We've got quite a couple of guys. Elsie as well there in Kampala. I hope you guys are well. Uh, I myself are tuning, I'm tuning in somewhere from central Kenya. So um, in a wonderful small village called Dogoma, just outside of Nyeri town. So welcome. Chico Jere from uh, Zambia. Welcome in Lusaka. How are you doing? Eda is in Nairobi. Karibu, karibu, karibu. Esther is pumped. Esther Njoki is pumped, whoop, whoop. All the way from Nairobi here. Excellent, excellent. Jacob in Kakamega. Hey, Nyarai all the way from Harare in Zimbabwe. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Ruth in Mombasa. Wow, wow, wow. Susie in Melbourne, Australia. From the other side, what time is it right now in Aussie, Susie? Uh, before before I, uh, before we have a discussion, because the two of us, we are missing Melbourne. I was there for a while. Good to see you, Susie. What time is it now? It must be you guys are ahead. So it's like in the evening, isn't it? Probably in the after late afternoon or evening. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's about five p.m. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Sarah, all the way in Kisumu. Excellent, good. As you can see, 
global discussion on abundance and that is humbling to us humbling to us so let's begin all right get my presentation up here on the screen for us let's get going so today's webinar is on the abundance mindset that's what we're going to be discussing today and we have to understand there's got to be more to life come on guys come on there's things that you've been hoping for things that you've been wanting and so when we talk about the abundance mindset it doesn't stop with just hope or just wanting the abundant mindset is really about action towards your goals that's where the difference is for those who are living abundantly they have set specific clear personal goals that they want to achieve and that's what now they have started to work towards have you set a goal for your life I was having a chat yesterday um, on another uh, program that we were working on, and it began to it began to hit me the powerful message of the current Olympics that we're watching. I know it's so difficult with COVID and all those different things, but if you listen to the story of the athletes who are participating in this in these Olympics right now in Tokyo, their story is an abundant story. Let me explain why. This is what we are talking about. We need to have a space in which we know what we are aiming for so we can take actions today. The problem for most of us is our ambitions, our goals, that abundant life that we want. Listen to the difference I said. I didn't say abundant mindset. I said the abundant life that we would like is that for some of us some of us hey we have not set up the opportunity to set a goal that now will force us to take action so here's here's the message guys from the olympics when you listen to athlete stories they tell you of a four year plan the wonderful thing about the olympics is that you know it's coming again in the next four years in fact they've even set up the next city they have set up the next date that it's going to begin so athletes today are not living just in their present moment they are living their lives based on where they want to be in 4 years time their their measure of abundance is the 4 year journey they're saying i'm willing to wake up at 4 am and run 100 kilometers i'm willing to be in the cold pool in the morning and swim before anybody wakes up i'm willing to lift those weights i'm willing to do whatever it takes to eat a specific diet for four years so that i can win that olympic gold that's now the abundance mindset the abundance mindset is one that is set up not just by the dream but by the action that that dream has caused so when you come into a centonomy class that's what we force you to do a a o oh, oops i used a tough word force but it's true because many people will come into the class and one of our first questions that you're going to hear is what do you want and people will say i want to be rich guess what that's not that's not sufficient in the centonomy class my next question to you is how rich do you want to be oh i want to have a nice house great where is that house how much does it cost and when do you want to move into it because when you say that you're becoming like the olympians who said 4 years ago they had to make specific choices 4 years ago they said this year 4 years ago they were going to talk about let's have uh, an immediate uh, plan for the next one year to get to the world championships at the world championships i'll be at this level the next year i'll be at this other event and i'll be at this level the next year i'll be at the commonwealth event and i'll be at this level and finally after 4 years my body will be prepared to get to that gold medal nobody is showing up at the olympics just looking and hoping to just participate they get into those who win gold got into win gold now guys do you just want to be living life participating and 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 also run 
or are you running towards a specific goal? That's what we want to challenge you to do today. And I hope you're ready for that challenge. My name is Waidaka Gatumia. I'm the CEO at Centonomy, and we want to help you to grow wealth over your life. Come on, Boniface, thank you so much for putting that in the chat box. Only one person, I asked a question, are you ready? And only one person responded to me. Do you see how serious we are? Are you ready? I was asking you a specific question. Are you ready to be challenged so that you can achieve the goal that you want? Three people have, have, so, said, have, have so far said that they're ready. I, I'm about to bring some amazing speakers here who are about to, who are about to blow your mind on this um, um, abundance mindset, but you have to be ready. In fact, Last point before I bring in our first speaker, who I'm so glad to have today. Watch this. We have so many people who are kind of just participating, they're kind of just present. And we realized that we had to change our mission because of that. Originally at Centonomy, we thought that this abundant life is for everybody. Everybody needs to know how to manage their money. Everybody needs to be able to, to build wealth. That's what we thought, right? No. We realized that there is a certain type of person who shows up in our class. We are often humbled when somebody comes into our class sitting to learn about wealth creation, and they're more wealthy than everybody in the room, including us, the trainers at Centonum. But watch this, what we realized was they understand the abundance mindset. The abundance mindset is one that is willing to learn and to grow. It is a humble mindset because in that humility, they understand that someone else can add value to their lives. Maybe they've built enough value, but they want to build even more. And it comes from humility. So we thought our mission was for everybody, but watch this. We changed our mission statement. Listen to this, our mission statement is this. We want to help to shift mindsets so that purposeful people, listen to what I said, not everybody, purposeful people can be able to create wealth and, and live abundantly because it's not just about the money. Listen to that, shift mindsets, your mindset. So that purposeful people, and because you woke up on a, on a Saturday morning for those in Africa at this point and, and in the, into the Middle East and into Europe, and for those all the way who started this day for us in Australia at 5 p.m., you've, you've joined us in this space. Shift your mindset so that you can create wealth and live abundantly. Wow. I'm so excited to invite our first guest for today. She's a dear friend. She's essentially family. Um, Jacqueline Othoro, she's, uh, in fact, the, the problem, why we don't have titles here is because her titles will fill the space. As I'm speaking, can somebody help Jack, Jacqueline to um, come onto the screen? Kindly as you join, if you don't mind, please keep your video and your camera off to allow us to be able to focus on the speakers for today. Um, Jacqueline, I know is in the room somewhere. Let me try and see if I can get her to, I'll get her camera on as I give all the details. There you are. Hi, Jackie. How are you doing? I can see you somewhere there. Ah, great. Excellent. So you can start your video and unmute, and then we'll be able to, to see you. Jacqueline Osoro is Reverend, Doctor, uh, Coach. Uh, Mentor, she's everything. Even as we have a discussion here, she's also a Centonomy trainer. Jackie, it's good to see you. I think you're somewhere here, if I can- I am. Uh, my I, screen sharing. How are you doing? I've had a problem with my, see, I'm even sideways. It's okay, I've had don't a worry. challenge you with my video this morning. Uh -huh. I've had two sessions already and it has chosen to do its own thing. And I, uh -huh. I, I don't know. So everybody will just have to just sit sideways. And look at me Maybe. sideways. Now we, yes. we adjust Something ourselves. Something like that. <laughs> yes. Because I tell you, you know, when the when a computer decides it wants to mess you up, it, it really it really has a good time. Just give me a moment. I think I know why I can change 
my uh, oh, okay oh okay now i'm upside down and uh, keep going you are ah, the right there director. we go very good so, um i'm up excellent hey, it is called for sweating why that is good to be here it's Eventually great to be we here. Got thank there. you thank you for i know eh? i tell you these things great so it's wonderful to be here with you uh, just sharing a few moments uh, on um, abundant living. There's got to be more to life, honestly. That really, that song that was sung by some musician has been ringing in my head since I saw this. There's got to be more than this. And I think the reason why we are having this session and the reason why you put this in syntonomy is that, yes, we've got to understand that life is more than just money. It's more than just uh, trying to make it in the rat race. It's more than the many things that people put to us. There's got to be more than the striving. There's got to be more than the hustler and the dynasty. There's got to be more than all these things people throw at us. It's got to be about us and living our best lives with the one life that we have. I, I believe we have one life on this earth. I don't believe in reincarnation. We're not coming back for round two. We're not coming back for another goal. This is not a trisex. This is it. And so we've got to make the best of the life that we have. And so I'm always excited to have a chat around abundant living, you know, because once we get our lives and our mindset right, you know, then really the sky's the limit. I love what you said there about the Olympics, you know, um, when it comes to either the Olympics or any of these high, you know, athletic um, games, tennis, rugby, football, we pay a lot of money to go and watch these things. We watch football. I mean, Kenyans are crazy about football. I can't tell one team from another. You know, I love rugby more than I love football. But tennis, swimming, you know, athletics. I mean, right next week, we have the, um, the World Junior Athletics Championships being held here in Nairobi. Why do we go watch that? We don't go watch it because we, we, we experts in the game. You know, most of us are armchair people. We have no clue really about the rules of the game. You know, we have no clue what the offside rule is about, but we are there shouting at the coach, go, go, do this, do that, the other, you, you know, you funny person. Why do we get so caught up? We're not watching the game itself. We're actually paying to watch the discipline, the discipline that someone has put in. You know, I played, I played tennis when I was in high school. It was one of our first, you know, sports in my high school. And for us, tennis was like, what? We have to be silent. We have to behave on the court. When for us, we'd rather be screaming, shouting, kicking the ball. If you took me to a tennis uh, match right now, Wimbledon, for example, or the US Open, I know how to hold a tennis racket. I know what a backhand is. I know how to smash a ball because I was taught all those things. But let me tell you, if you're told that Jackie O'Farr is coming to play tennis, against maybe Waidaka, that whole stadium will be empty because there is no discipline behind my tennis play. I have not held a racket in maybe 15 to 20 years. Nobody wants to come to know that I do know the game. They want to come and see what has my discipline over the years done for me. So that's why they'll come and watch Serena. That's why they'll watch Usain Bolt. That's why they'll come and watch the Kenya rugby team. They are watching people's discipline. And that, for me, is a big part of abundant living. Abundant living, you don't have an abundant life if you have no discipline in your life. You can't have an abundant life without discipline. And discipline starts in every aspect of our life. And the biggest place for us to begin having discipline ooh, is here, in this head, in this, this thing. This thing causes us stress because it's, one, it's probably the most undisciplined part of our life. Yet our mind runs everything. If we can't get our mind to be disciplined, if we can't get our mind to, to, to be still, to think through things, to work on certain things, our life then is just higgledy piggledy. It is here, it is there. Something happens this side, we run. Somebody's planting potatoes and they say it's the next just thing, we run that side. Somebody begins a shop in the middle of town to sell jeans, you think that's it. There is no focus in what we're doing. There's no, there's no focus in the way we're making our money. And then worse yet, the money will come in and it will go out exactly the same way, possibly even faster than you have planned for it, simply because we lack discipline. So for me, in my season of life, I am looking at my life and I'm saying, if I'm to say I'm living an abundant life and someone was to come and have a look at my discipline, oh Lord, 
look at my mind. Oh, dear. what would they be seeing? Would they be seeing somebody who has a good target, a goal? I like that you talked about goals, Wadaka. That they have a goal. And that they know where they're going to be in five years' time. They know where they're going to be in four years' time. Is that what they have? Or are they just hoping that somehow this thing will stick? I can tell someone's abundance of their life based on the discipline that they have in their life. And it doesn't have to be something big. Just pick on one thing small. So let's do an exercise. Yeah? Let's do an exercise. And I, I really, I really, you know, um, and I've even talked to Idaka about it. I said, well, Idaka, should I put a PowerPoint presentation? You know, do I have slides? Should I have pictures? And he said, you know what, you do you. And I said, you know what? I don't need to get a PowerPoint. So PowerPoint will derail me. Because the things I want to say, I want them to come from my heart so that they stick with you, so that you guys sign up at the end of this thing and get yourself sorted out at St. Autonomy, all right? So I want you all to close your eyes. And I, you, I'll have to trust you. I'll have to trust that you are closing your eyes because I can't see any one of you. So just close your eyes. And while Maybe you're closing, I'm closing my eyes, yeah, you sound like your daughter. You put your hand over your eyes, but your eyes are wide open, okay? All right, so just sit comfortably. Secure yourself, settle yourself where you are. If you're doing something else at this time, because I know when we're on Zoom calls, we tend to be multitasking, just take a pause for a few minutes and just close your eyes, sit down, be centered somewhere on a chair, on a table. Even if you're standing, you can stand, but stand still and keep your eyes closed. Okay, and I want you to see the picture of a lemon. A nice, fat, juicy, yellow lemon. All right? You can picture that in your mind. Keep your eyes closed. Don't open your eyes. Just picture that nice, round, juicy lemon. And then I want you to take your hand, stretch your hand out in your imagination, and grab hold of a sharp knife. Grab hold of a sharp knife. So you have a lemon in one hand and you have a sharp knife in the other. I want you to slice through that lemon in half and just see how the juice is flowing out of it. Slice with the lemon and then slice the one half into quarters. And then I want you to pick up a quarter of that lemon. And I want you to go and take the largest, biggest bite out of that lemon. Done? Wonderful. Now I want to see in your comment section, what was going through you? What were you feeling when you did that? What was happening? Just write in, your, in the comment section, well, that way you can comment if you want to comment. Let me just pop up in the chat and just see. Um... Jackie, I don't like lemons. So <laughs> you, you, were, you were torturing me. I was like, why would I want to take such a big? Okay. Out of a lemon. Someone said delicious, juicy. And you said you don't like it. I oh, like I it. cringed at the thought, closing my eyes in bitterness. Uh, what else are people fear? Oh my goodness. Okay. What else? Just keep writing what it is. Bitter. Joseph. Okay. Said I was I, like, a I big like, bite is yeah. risky, but I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Then some. Oh my gosh. Someone for a moment, I thought I cut myself. <laughs> <laughs> It's the lemon was on one hand, that's very good. Ew, lemons are bitter, bitterness. Okay, yeah. how many of you actually were eating a lemon? None of you. So I don't think you ran out and quickly got a juicy bitter. I could feel saliva in my mouth. Linda Likoko, I'm gonna come back. And Cynthia Karyuki, lemon, sour taste. My taste buds paint, oh my goodness. I cringe the thought of biting. Now let me tell you something. One fast, I did not give you an orange, I gave you a lemon. <laughs> now, let me explain what has just happened here. Eh? And this is the power of our mind. And this is what you will have to engage when you come into Syntonomy to begin to live the abundant life. Because I'm telling you, if you follow the principles in Syntonomy and you will, I keep telling the class that I used to take, you will become rich. But when you do become rich, what are you going to do at that point? You've got to be able to know that I have got some practical things. That I need to do. So this is a, a, this example. Let me explain it to you. This is the power of your mind. This is the power of your mind. If I'd asked a different question and asked the question, has somebody in this group, is there anybody who has never eaten a lemon or drank lemon juice? 
this that person would not be able to have the experiences that you guys have shared. Just on the memory of having experienced a lemon in the past, it's bitter, it is sour. You know, some of you, your bodies began to actually react. Someone said, my teeth shivered. Others, the glands already began to produce alkaline to deal with the anticipation of the lemon coming. Yet all you guys were doing was sitting or standing with your eyes closed and imagining a lemon and eating that lemon. That is the power of your mind, that your mind can actually change your physiology of your body because of what you've placed in it. In the past, you'd eaten a lemon. You knew that a lemon is sour, it is tart. There are a few people here are a bit crazy who are saying it is juicy and they love it. But you have a memory that was implanted in you. And just by closing your eyes and thinking about it, your body has physically reacted and has, has responded to a thought. That is the key to abundant living. That we need to put into our minds things that we know will have a positive effect on our, our being, our, either our body or the world that we live in. So when we look at abundant living, if, I, if I'm to just change tack a little bit, Abundance living, as I said, has got to be more than what we see. Because we know of many millionaires, many rich people who are the most miserable people in the world. We know of many people who have barely a penny to their name. But these are some of the most joyful, wonderful, fun, loving people. Because abundant living has got nothing to do with the money that you have in your account. Having good account, uh, money in your account with a, with, with a good, with a good uh, mindset is a bonus. So let's get the mindset right first so that by the time you acquire the wealth, you have the money, then you have the best of both worlds, all right? You have the best of both worlds. So let's look at this. Um, one of the things that, I, you know, the exercise we've just done as well is that you were able to, in your mind's eye, see the abundance of this lemon. You were able with your mind's eye to feel what the lemon felt, you know, in your hand. Was it a big lemon or a small lemon? You were able to see with your mind's eye the knife that I told you to take from the side to the point that somebody even feared cutting themselves because they thought, oh my goodness, I've got a knife in my hand. Because what you are able to see with your own eyes then reflects onto your abundant living. But let me say this as well. It can also happen with negative things. So when it comes to abundant living, we've got to be careful what we're feeding our mind. Because if we feed negativity, if we feed negative emotions, then that's what we're going to live out and that's what we're going to see manifesting in the world around us. Okay. So I have a morbid fear. Well, I shouldn't say morbid because I won't die. But I really have a fear of caterpillars, you know, small worms. They can be even as small as this, but when I was a, a teenager or a young girl, my, my siblings would, would, you know, take a caterpillar, put it in their hand like this, and then come and say, Jackie, let us give you something. And then they'll drop a worm and they would die of laughter, watching me howl, scream out, cry out, because a small caterpillar was put in my hand. And to date, if anybody comes to me and tells me I want to give you something and they've got a closed fist like this, I refuse. It could be gold. It could be a diamond. It could be money. I say, no, I need to see your hand open to know what is in there before you, lest you put something that is creepy and crawly in my hand. And truth be told, I could squash it and it's dead, really. I can't even peel peas because when I peel peas, you know, we all peel peas and we find inside peas is one or two, you know, worms that are sitting eating. I throw that whole bucket away I tell you if I see just even a small one like this. That's how I feel about it. And it affects the way I handle certain things. I don't receive gifts from a closed fist. I rarely um, shell peas because I know I will find one. So even if the whole batch of 100 peas are good, just one will make me not shell the peas. It's a negative emotion that controls the way I see and do certain things. Now, let me put that in perspective. There's a, there's a new business that has really been uh, pushed in, in, in Kenya by the, the Japanese um, 
the, the nation of Japan and the Japanese embassy here in Kenya, and that is silkworm farming. Because they are telling Kenyans that they want Kenyans, we've got the mulberry trees here, we've got the space environment, we've got the, the manpower, and they're saying we need to go into mulberry farming to the point that they even had someone embedded in the office, someone from Japan, embedded in the office of the president to ensure that Kenyans get into silk farming. I was told this story by the person who was involved, who was actually in charge of this uh, from the Kenyan side and said, Jackie, are you interested? I mean, silk, this is an expensive um, material. It is worldwide. It's needed. It's natural. You know, we can set you up. We can, you know, get you a little place. You don't have much space. You can actually, we can get you the worms. Hey, you mentioned that one word, worms. I said, it's all right. I can remain poor. It's okay. Me, catching, dealing with worms. But you see, my fear of a simple, soft, you know, insect caused me to let go of an opportunity that could possibly have brought me myself, my family, my community, uh, abundance in wealth. So one of the things we need to be careful of is what we hold on to ourselves as a negative emotion that then produces a negative outworking in our body. So I don't know how much time I have, but I can please keep me posted on time. You know me, I can go on for Five long, minutes, eh? five minutes. Five bring minutes, it to okay. A massive let me close. bring it to a close. So let me just do one of the things that I, I love to do when I teach. I love to help people understand where a particular thought or word comes from. Because once you understand its roots and its origins, then you're able to understand what to do with it. So when we look at the word abundant, abundant, that word comes from the word abound. Abundant comes from the word abound. And what abound means, it means ex excessively over and above excessively over and above. So for example, an abundant life is not about having more of everything, more money, a bigger house. We will talk about those things when, when you do the class. You are learning about managing your finances. You will learn about real estate. You will learn about taking you know, um, loans and all that, but it's got nothing to do in its essence about having more of these things about having a bigger house than your neighbor. It's not having um, you know, a freezer full of meat and of food. I remember last year during the pandemic, everybody went out crazy and they went and they bought tissue paper like mad, there was no tissue paper. They bought food, they bought all manner of stuff. Why? Because there was a feeling that things were gonna go bad and they're gonna run out. Abundance is not about what you can acquire or what you can have. Abundance of life, is having more of what you feed yourself with. That's the abundant life. An abundant life is having more of what you want to do for others. So I, when I, did, when I used to teach the class, I used to talk about what is your why? Why do you want these things? Why do you want to have more money? Why do you want to have a bigger house? You know, I heard of somebody who built a house that cost a um, hundred and... Uh, I think it's 180 million Kenya shillings up in Kitale, not Nairobi, Kitale. 180 million shillings, massive mansion. And the man has one child and they live abroad. If that house was built so that it can be used as a, as a, as a home for homeless children, so that it can be used as a place, as a getaway house for you know, uh, abused women, so that it can be used as a place for retreat. Having a purpose beyond just having a big house is some of the things that each of us will have to think through when we're thinking about the why. Why do we want all these things? An abundant life, my friends, as I said, is in the mind, but it begins in your heart. It begins in the place where you consider others, other the other people's lives, other people's well-being what is going on in someone else's life, that's where your abundant life begins, in your heart, and it plays out in your mind. It is, consists of the quality of our relationships, how you relate to those around you, that's part of an abundant life. You don't want to be sitting on top of the hill and you're the only person there. Everybody else can't get to you. 
So abundant living is what you have in your mind. It begins in your heart, but it also encompasses the relationships around us. So I wish each and every one of you uh, an abundant life right now. That I want to declare that over you, that you will have an abundant life. But part of that journey will take place when you sign up for this course. I am selling it hard because I know it's a good course. I've seen people's lives changed. I've been a part of it. And I want to encourage you, if you're thinking about changing how you deal with money, this is the course for you. Maidaka, back to you. Thank you very much. As always, you delivered right on time and really powerful stuff. I wrote that down to abound is ex excessively over and above. And yes, everything we talk about has to be linked to something that matters to you, Reverend Doctor. <laughs> Coach, uh, Jackie, we are so glad that you were able to come and, and share with us. It's really, really challenging for us to be able to think about it. Watch this. Jackie, I don't know if you've thought about this, that people yes. often think it, when we discuss the mindset, people think yes. it's weird. Like, I don't right. know where, where that comes from. We don't have a culture for this, this idea. But for some reason, we don't think it's weird when we think about sports teams. I told you, I'm really in the Olympics at the yes. moment. I'm inside yes. the Olympics. But for sports teams, they have sports psychologists who help them to right. visualize their race, exactly. to visualize exactly. their, their actions. So I don't know, why, why do we think it's weird, Jackie? Okay, I'll say this and it may sound controversial. And if it does, you'll see me exit this very quickly and you can deal with the fallout. I'll mute you I, quick. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because Kenyans, we are very religious. Bear with me. Uh -huh. We are wow. religious people. So we, we tend to be very cautious about anything that causes us to deal with the realm beyond either our faith or what we can physically see. And when we get into the space of the imagination of psychology, many people are not sure whether they'll be crossing boundaries. So for example, let's look at the thing of imagination. An abundant life is also stemmed in imagination. And I do talk to people in the class about what can you dream? What can you think? What can you imagine? Many people are fearful of imagination because they're not sure where the source of the imagination is coming from. So they think that I'm a good Christian and the devil is waiting to plant seeds in my mind. Mm -hmm. So let me not get into the place of imagination or thinking through things or even meditating. And even, even when we mention the word meditating, I can see some people are already cringing, but there's a right way to meditate. The Eastern meditation is very, has taken it another direction but there's a right way to to think upon, to ponder, to, to have it run around. That is the bedrock of imagination. And once you get there, that's when you're able to push yourself to a different level. Sports people do it all together, all, all the time. Let me give you one example, and then I keep quiet. Yes. I have a nephew, I have nephews, and, and, and Radaka, you met my nephews. They are sports people, 11 years old, and they are, you know, 11, I think, nine and, and seven, and they are incredible athletes. And so my, the oldest is a runner and he was uh, doing his final uh, sports day before he leaves primary school to go to secondary school. And what he did with his parents is that they sat down together and they began to imagine the race. What it will feel like when he's touching the ground before the, 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 the whistle goes, how he will run, you know, the, the wind passing past, you know, uh, past his face and just his eye on the, on the, on the, on the clothes. And they practiced that. Now, he, my, my brother did it with all three of his sons. The first son and the third son are very fast runners. The second son is a little bit slower. But the first two won, won the races, won, won every race they were number one. The second son, they were expecting him to come maybe number five or six because they were stronger runners. But because they did the same exercise with him to see himself running, he was number two in his final race. And even the sports master came and said, we have never seen him run that fast. The thing is, all three boys had run the race before they got onto the field. We must begin to look at our race before we get started. By that wow. I'm done. Wow. Wow. If I look, people are still asking you more. They don't want you to go, Jackie. <laughs> Another uh, meeting I have to run off, unfortunately. Let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, since you brought up that running, I'll tell you a quick story yes. of my experience yes. in, in, in high school. Yes. Um, I, I, I was in the 100 meter race and, and um, 
there was uh, uh, two twins that, who are brilliant runners. They were expected mm-hmm. to win. Um, I, I was not, I was just there. I was also, and also run. But at the beginning of the race, there was a really, really beautiful young lady. I will not mention her name because people might know her, who was there at the side of the, of, of the, of the um, track. And just before we started, she <laughs> shouted my name, go away, duck out. Oh, let me tell was, you, Jackie, was I was it. third. I've never been third in my life, but I was third behind the twins. Come I, on. I wasn't an also run. I came home with, with, with the bronze with a medal. medal. You got a medal. Yes. Because it's up here. I don't think exactly. I would have run like that if it yeah. wasn't like that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Really appreciate You're it. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. God bless as you go. God bless and you, and may you all enjoy the remainder of your time. I'm sorry I can't stay. I have another meeting. I need to physically go and attend. But guys, this is a great program. Please do sign up at the end of it. God bless you all. Yeah. So as Jackie is leaving, I just wanted to uh, to mention. Let me just get myself back here on the screen. Uh, now, what am I doing? Ah, there we go. No. Good. I think I'm there now. Excellent. This is a principle about how our mind works that we all need to begin to really think through. This is something that I've learned recently and especially from one of my closest mentors who's our founder at, at, at Syntonomy, Washek and Duati. Um, when we talk about this abundance mindset and we, we talk about that there's got to be more to life, I've seen it in action because when we, when we were looking at the mission of Syntonomy and we were looking at what we were able to do, we began to see what Syntonomy is doing now was written down five, six, 10, 12 years ago by our founder. She taught us that if you write things down, you begin to achieve them. When we were celebrating our 10 year anniversary at Syntonomy, she took out her notebook and she said, I wrote this down 12 years ago that we'll be educating teenagers, we'll be educating uh, companies, that we'll be helping people build greater businesses. She had written down that she would have written a book and guess what? A couple of years later, she has an amazing book called uh, Making Sense. And there's power in training our mind, even just simply to sit down to think think about what we want to achieve. We often don't think enough. One of the exercises we do in the classes is to help people to just sit down and think, what do you want? And so I encourage you to begin to put yourself into this mindset, get the book, uh, begin to sign up for the class because the class is coming up really shortly. We're telling you about Syntonomy 101. Syntonomy 101 is all about wealth creation. And we teach the principles of wealth creation from starting off with your mindset Then we get into how money works in time value of money and debt management. We talk about living abundantly, which is uh, one of the classes that uh, Reverend Jackie also was, is one of the teachers. She's an amazing coach and she's uh, one of the trainers who helps us to bring these principles of abundance out. Um, We got, we then get in, after we've done that, because we have to deal with our mind and about the practical side of, of money management. Now we get into the investment classes. I know many of us want, ah, Just tell me how to get into treasury bonds. Just tell me how to invest in the stock market. Just tell me how to invest in real estate. No, why? Because what is the reason you are investing in those things? If you have not got a plan, then even if we tell you how these principles work, these these instruments work, they're not gonna help you. Where's the money coming from for that investment? After that, we get into the protection classes, which are really about insurance, estate planning, taxes, And finally, in module 11 there at the bottom, we put together a five-year financial plan. Remember, this is the thing that's going to drive you and put your abundant mindset on paper and push you in the right direction. That's what we're going to do. Finally, we talk about investment groups and how we can implement as we go along. The three areas, as we said, are managing your money and starts off by managing your mindset. Then we talk about investments and then we talk about protection and planning. That five-year financial plan really matters. Guess what? Because you showed up this morning, this evening, this afternoon, wherever you are in the world, we've got a special discount for you on registration. But first of all, just to let you know, the classes begin on the 7th of September. You come into class for one session per week, one, either on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday evening. 
or Saturday morning at a time like this, all right? So you come for one of those classes. The same class is taught on all four days. This is for your convenience. So that for instance, if you've signed up for the Wednesday class, but something happens, you are in a meeting or you couldn't make it, you're more than welcome to join any of the other classes during that week. It is built for your convenience. As I said, we have a discount today of a thousand shillings, which is about $10 off your registration. Usually register at $15 or 1,500 shillings. But today, register today because you have shown up for the open day at only 500 shillings today, okay? The tuition of 39,000 shillings after that is payable in installments. So you can put together a plan on how you're going to do it as you can see there on the screen. And you're experiencing at this point, because we are all going through this pandemic, we are cognizant of that. And so all our fees are currently discounted at 10% because we want as many people to uh, be able to access this information. I'm encouraging you take advantage of this open day uh, discount. You're getting a thousand shillings off your registration. It's about $10 off your registration. And you can make that payment right now. I know some of you are already convinced after you listen to uh, uh, Jackie. Uh, you can make that registration now of only 500 shillings via M-Pesa. For those who have access to M-Pesa, the number is 9868850. Put in your first name as the account number, followed by 101, which is uh, for the program Centonomy 101. We'll know which one that you're coming for. If you're outside of Kenya, these are the bank details that you can be able to do. You can quickly do a screenshot if you want so that you have the bank details ready for you so that you can make that payment today. Do take advantage of that as we go forward. So we're still talking about the abundance mindset. I'm so glad to invite our next speaker for the day. He's a media personality. I've seen him getting into advertisement now. He's a great host. He's hosted me on a couple of TV stations as well. Mr. Jeff Motte is also just an all around gentleman who I'm so glad to be sharing the stage with right now. Jeff, I hope you are well. I can see you have joined me there. Yes, I have. Uh, let me start with the standard preamble for these meetings. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Hold on one second. I get rid of my screen, which might be. Ah. And I'm going to make you. There okay, we go. There we go. Fantastic. Yes. Good morning. morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Yeah, I'm every, every timeline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was interesting when uh, Jackie was talking about, um, you know, that mental exercise she took us through with the lemon. And uh -huh. I do remember you saying that there were some people in Australia. And in Australia, I'm sure it's like past two in the afternoon. Yeah, and it's after five. I was, I was, I was actually cautious because I thought somebody will say they had a lemon, they've sliced it, they have a glass of tequila. That was just me. Thankfully, nobody went there, you know, probably because... We know where your mind it. is. We know where your mind is. <laughs> well, clearly it is 5 p.m. somewhere in the planet, as you have just said. <laughs> uh, but I mean, absolutely amazing stuff from uh, Jackie right there. And I mean, it's a tough act to follow as a speaker because you listen to her and she's absolutely dropping gems. I was busy taking notes as well as she was talking because it's things you think about and you realize, hmm... That's exactly something I've been going through right now. How do I deal with that, you know? And I don't know if I should probably just get right to it, pick it up from there, even as we move forward. How much time do you have, uh, Waidaka? How much You have your 20 it? minutes, bro. So okay, okay. We're good. I, I will make uh, best use of that as possible. And what, for me, where I'd want to start is from the question of, even as we talk about abundance, the question is, why? Why do you want that abundance, you know, whether it's abundance in wealth, whether it's abundance in health, you know, fitness. Why, why do you want that? Uh, let me tell you a personal story. This is my first week back in the gym. I've taken a break for probably a month, a month and a half, you know, and for anybody who exercises or has any, you know, fitness regimen, you will know week one, week two, absolutely hell. That is when you ask yourself, why? Why am I doing this? Why am I waking up with soreness the following day and going back there again? Which crazy human being does that? You know, that's what you ask yourself. Why do you want to do that? For me, usually in that particular space, I always have this uh, mental image of Jeff like at 60, 65, 70, being able to be healthy, strong enough to play with his grandkids, God willing, if, if they'll be there. And that's what keeps me motivated. You know, um, that picture of me running around with that two-year-old 
it just makes me feel like oh, it's, it's worth it. You want to be here, you want to be healthy, you want to enjoy life with them, you know? And that's how I look at it. If you transpose that to something else, like probably, you know, abundance in terms of wealth, again, why? Why do you want all that money? Because yes, I'm sure once you get that first million, that second million, that third million, the novelty will wear off, you know? Then from there, why? What do you want to do with that money? Is it the big car? Then? Is it the big house? Then? Because after you've done all of that, there's still that feeling within you that if you haven't really achieved your why, it won't be worth much, you know? So is it um, a bigger purpose um, other than, you know, the basic needs going up that um, hierarchy of needs? Uh, once you've gotten to self-actualization, what, what do you want to do with the wealth? So for me, that's um, a, a critical point in terms of the why that you want this abundance in whichever sphere of life it is. Um, I, I think for me, it's something really important that um, every single person needs to think about, even as we're going through this. And it's an internal question, you know, because only you know your why. And it's funnily one of the hardest questions to answer as well, you know, because you can't lie to yourself. You can lie to everybody else. But Dhaka can come and say, may I want to get a billion shillings so I can open um, a foundation that I can help. But is that really what you want to do? Or is it some other purpose that nobody knows about and that you don't want to talk about, you know? So that's one of the hardest questions to answer from where I stand and from what I've seen. But it's also the foundation of everything else. Because once you get your why on the reason you want all of this abundance and why you're seeking it, then I think probably a quarter way there or even halfway there in terms of now moving forward with what needs to be done in terms of actual execution. My second point on this is once you have established your why and moved in that particular direction, I think another thing that people need to think about is, can you handle the abundance once you get it? You know, if I can use my previous example of me trying to get back in shape, can I handle it once I get it? If I woke up tomorrow with a six pack and all of that, will I be this vain creature who can't wear a shirt in public anymore? I'm that weird guy in a restaurant shirtless because I have it. Weird picture, you know, but you get what I mean. And if you look at it in any other way as well, in terms of um, once you've achieved the success you want to achieve, or gotten the abundance you want to achieve, can you handle it? Will it um, expose parts of you that have been um, latent or hidden because you didn't have it, you know, and now that you have it, you change. You know, the people usually say, um, you know, money changed, Jeff, money changed so and so. It really didn't change. It's just actually exposed the fact that they couldn't handle it. Before they didn't have it, there was nothing to handle. There's an interesting example that uh, Waidaka gave in one of um, the classes that I attended um, at St. Honome. He was talking about the fact that, yes, everybody wants to be a very successful business person. Again, can you handle it? Can you handle what comes with doing, you know, multi-million shilling deals? Can you handle the tax issues that come with that, the regulatory issues that come with that, the, the people skills that are needed even within the organization to do that? Can you handle that? That's a question that you need, you need to ask yourself and be honest about it because at times when you take it to that level, then you probably realize, no, maybe that's not what I want. It will steal my joy as I try to do that because that's going to be a full-time job, you know, as well. So it's, it's good to take yourself there. Again, like um, that was pointed out mentally, take yourself to that point where you have achieved whatever it is you want to achieve in whichever, in whichever sphere rather. And then ask yourself, can you handle what it takes to be there? And if so, and if you feel that you'd have a high quality of life doing that, fine, go for it and do what needs to be done to get there because it's a step-by-step -step process. And every step of the way, I mean, you learn new things about yourself and what you're dealing with. And once you do get to your destination, which is, I would think, one part of the ladder that takes you to the next step, from there, it's easier for you to realize, okay, I'm at this particular point. I didn't think I would get um, here, but now that I'm here, what new part of me do I need to bring out to move on to the next level? Because as I say, life is a journey. So even in that mental map that you have, so to speak, once you get to point X, which had been the ultimate goal, then what happens next from there? What, uh, what extra thing are you doing? What extra goal are you putting forward? So I think that's something else that we need to think about. My next issue or my next point would be, it's all good when you know what you want and what you want to achieve and what you want to get. I think another question that's important to ask is, what are you willing to give up you know, to get there? Because I feel life is created 
to, in, to be in balance. You know, there has to be some form of symmetry. There's day, there's night, there's up, there's down, you know. Um, for all you want to have, the things you have to let go of. I, for me, that's just a principle I, I feel works in life. You know, if you want to um, be a very good athlete, there are things you're going to have to give up. You know, there are things you might not have to eat. There's a certain physical regimen you'll have to follow. Um, you would be able to stay out at night as long as other people do because it's just, that's how you keep the balance. That's how you keep the symmetry. If you want to be a very good student, you know, even in school, you know, if you're getting your master's or PhD, or undergrad or high school, depending on the level that you are, to get that particular level of success, there's something that you need to let go of. That's how you keep the balance. It's just that simple. You know, at times you complicate these things, but it's just, it's how you keep the scale, you know, in keel on an even uh, level. If you want to go to this particular point, there's something that you need to let go so that you, you stay in that particular space. And again, you know, even as we're all on that journey trying to get there, it's a question you need to ask yourself. What are you willing to give up together? Because there's something that you'll need to let go of to move to the next level. You know, that's, um, there's that uh, uh, popular saying that uh, for someone to get to a place they haven't gotten to, they have to do something they've never done, you know? And that's important for you to think about. What are you willing to give up to, to you know, get to that particular level? What do you feel you will need to let go of? And you know, those things that you want to let go of are the most painful. They're the ones either that, because we're creatures of habit, you've done it for so long, you can't imagine yourself not doing it, you know, or let, if I let go of that, how will life be? You know, if I have to now sleep earlier or study later, how will life be? Will my social life, you know, just come to an end because of that? If I have to be more prudent with my finances, what does that mean for the things that I like to do for going out and, you know, enjoying your weekend and all of that? I don't know. But again, I think the, the, the beauty about this particular session that we're having this uh, particular day, wherever we are, is that it's very introspective. It's one of those things that even as you talk about it here, you sit down, you jot all of these th things down and you, you're honest with yourself. You look at that piece of paper, you look at yourself in the mirror and you have the toughest conversations which are with yourself on how to move forward. You know, there are people around you who uh, will be, excellent support systems. You can vet your people, uh, your closest friends, your mentors who will help you move along the journey. But at the end of the day, you're the one moving. They only help, you know? So this is a part that you sit down and you realize, okay, probably I've been falling short because this is what I've been supposed to have let go of. I haven't let go of it. And that's why I'm still at the same spot. You know why I'm not getting to that level of abundance that um, I need to be. And this is what I need to do to do that, you know? So for the beauty about this particular session is the fact that it calls on a lot of introspection uh, moving forward and having those tough conversations with self. Um, another point for me in terms of this abundant life set is uh, something that um, Reverend uh, Jackie just took the words from my mouth, discipline. Because for me, discipline is doing things that need to be done when you don't want to do them, you know, because with anything in life, there's that first phase, you know, that first time when it's still new, it's unique, you're feeling motivated to do it, you've just saved your first thousand shillings, you're like, yes, 1,000 shillings today, if I do this diligently, I will get to a certain point at this time, and it feels nice now, but you get on the second month, you get on the third month, and you're like, I will it really, it's not adding up as fast as I thought, and how many more months, and now there's this bill that has come up, and there's this thing I want to do, because there's always competing needs, and that's when the discipline kicks in, you know, when you don't want to do it, but the only way to get to that next level, to get closer to what we are calling abundance, is keeping to that promise that you made to yourself in terms of the discipline moving forward, and I feel that's important. It's one of the things that, you know, separates those who've reached their goals and those who are yet to get there, it's how disciplined can you be with what you want? You know, once you've made that promise to yourself, are you willing to stay the course? And the course at times, there are so many curveballs that will come your way. But at the end of the day, you have your true north. You know what your goal is. You know what you want to achieve. Can you stay the course? And I think what helps in staying the course is that aspect of, you know, discipline. Just even when it doesn't feel like the most joyous thing to do you don't want to wake up in the morning because yesterday was a late night because there was something else and because and there's a reason behind it but you still need to get it done you know because you know what you want you know why you want that particular level of abundance 
can can you do that? And I mean, even in um, I'm not uh, one who can speak very authoritatively on spiritual life, like um, Reverend Jackie can. But it's the same thing, you know, even with like daily devotions, you have had a long day, you're home, you're tired. Do you feel like you want to still take out whatever scripture you read or meditate or you just call it a night? You know, it's, it's one of those things that you just need to think about and evaluate yourself and see, okay, I had said I want to get abundance in this particular, you know, sphere. This is what I need to do. It doesn't feel so exciting now. The novelty has worn off, yes, but still, the goal remains the same even without the novelty, you know, what you want to do remains the same, even without the novelty, you know, can, can, can you do that? If um, even in what, what I do in terms of um, television production, you know, at times it gets to a point where this, there's so many other things going on, but you still want to produce an excellent show, you know, can you still put in the work? Can you still put in the research? Can you still do it at that particular level, even when it's not as exciting, even when it's difficult, even when it's a subject that probably isn't your favorite, you know, because that's that's what life demands, you know, at the end of the day, to, to move to that particular level of abundance. My final point is uh, probably from a book um, that I, it's actually from a book that I read. Um, it's by an author called Ryan Holiday. The book is The Obstacle is the Way. If you haven't read it, I suggest probably you can look at the synopsis of it um, later on absolutely amazing book. And I think the title is almost self-explanatory in terms of um, what it talks about in the sense that when he says the obstacle is the way, it's those challenges, those difficulties that come your way that you want to avoid, you know, because at times they could be very messy in how you have to deal with them. If it's um, a relational issue, uh, they could be very hard to deal with because of probably years and years and years of doing the same thing and now having to deal with that. It could be something that might seem like an insurmountable financial challenge as well. And you're like, where do I even begin? You know, so you want to avoid that. You procrastinate. You, you decide to give yourself another goal. But in the back of your mind, there's, there's that knowing feeling, knowing, no, yes, you have a new goal. But what you really should be doing is that other one that you've kind of turned your you know, focus away from. And you need to go back there. And with what he speaks about is that what you need to do is deal with that obstacle. That is where you find um, your next level of self, so to speak. That is probably where you find your level of abundance on the other side of this particular obstacle. So what you're trying to avoid is what you really need to be going through to get a richer life experience, you know, to unlock things about you that you probably even didn't know, you know, and that's what you need to do because the obstacle is the way, again, I think it's an amazing book to read, put in a frame of mind where you realize all the challenges that you're facing, all the things that come up when you're on your road to abundance that you hadn't foreseen. And now you're thinking, okay, probably I need to put a pause on this because this particular uh, challenge has come up. No, that's not it. The obstacle is the way. There's a reason why it's been put there. There's something that it's teaching you for the next level of you. You know, it's equipping you for what's coming up even when you get to that level of abundance. Because when you get there, Life doesn't stop there. Now there's something new that you're going to do. But in order to do that, you need to go through this obstacle. You need to learn something. There's something that you're getting either in terms of refinement of character or in terms of uh, sheer knowledge that you need to uh, handle what's coming up in the future. And that's why it's important to understand that all of these challenges we face, whether it's interpersonal, whether it's uh, family, whether it's business, academic as well, there's a reason why you're in that particular space. There's something that it needs to teach you. And once you get that particular lesson, you move on to the next phase. I think that's what life is. It teaches you at a certain level. Once you've understood it uh, proper, you've understood what you needed to do, then from there, you move on to the next uh, phase of whatever it is you're doing. So for me, amazing book. If you could have a chance to check it out, check it out as well. Ryan Holiday, The Obstacle is the Way, teaches you about that particular aspect of things. When you feel like this particular challenge is here, I've tried again and again and again, it's not working. It's not for you to give up. It's for you to reevaluate, see what you've tried. Think about how else can I deal with this? And then from there, tackle it yet again. Because again, like Ryan said, the obstacle is the way. That's how you get onto your next level of abundance in whichever sphere um, you're trying to get that abundance in at this particular point. I hand over the virtual mic to our very able moderator, Waidaka. Please take it from here. Asante. Blown. Mind blown, Jeff. That's it. And, and you've delivered um, exactly what we thought about. Can I challenge you, Jeff, on live 
uh, TV because you, you, you used to do that to me so many times. <laughs> so can, can you turn the favor? Go for it. Go for it. So what have you had to give up on your journey of abundance? For me, there's that comfort zone, to be honest, um, and especially with things that tend to become routine. You know, there's a way you do your show. There's a way you live your life. There's a way, I mean, case in point, I'd started my master's maybe like three years uh, back. And then I just yeah. took a pause because I had two jobs. I was doing a radio show and a TV show. There's yeah. not enough time to go back to school. And you have all of these excuses. But at the back of your mind, you're like, if you really wanted to finish this and get it out of the way, you yeah. could get it done, you know? And it's something I did not for so long, you know? Uh, even my wife called me out of it. She's like, Jeff, seriously, it's a two-year course. You're on year seven. What is, this is not medicine. What is <laughs> happening? You know? <laughs> and for me, luckily, at least I am on my second last chapter of my thesis here. So hopefully by the end of the month, we are done with this. We are dusted. But it's, it's that thing of realizing at times you get into a routine that that's working. You know, there's nothing wrong when you look at it. Um, and at times that's the most dangerous place to be. You know, so I, I decided I need to finish this so I can get something else moving in that particular space as well for me. So for me, it was wow. that routine that you have. Yes, I know I'm waking up and I'm working out and I'm going to work and I'm doing all of these things. But how else do I expand myself, so to speak? And for me, that was it. Getting out of that particular uh, comfort zone that I had and yep. letting that go. It's, 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 it's not the easiest thing. Let me tell you, yeah. I was... I was, I was uh, making fun of it the other day because at times you like to describe yourself as an avid reader. And for those who've yeah. done uh, a master's course, there's that thing called that monster, let me say, called literature review. Yes. You realize you're not an avid reader at all. You realize you're just like, no, I can't do this again. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's those things. It's, it's, it's those things that just get you out of your comfort zone. But for me, that was the one that I realized and it's um, what I've uh, had to deal with. That's amazing, Jeff. Um, you mentioned that you would not be that vain guy wearing. I think when I get my six pack, God willing, Yanni, Jeff, I think I'll do away with shirts altogether. That's my that's my vision. It's funny that you, it's funny that you said um, the relational issues. So for guys who come into the class, I know what you, what you're talking about. Remember, we do the bonus session on money and relationships because we've realized. Um, that key relational issues that have to be dealt with in the context of money. And, and I really appreciate that you brought that up. Jeff, if you look at the comments, people can relate to what you're saying. They have said a big thank you. And from us here at Centonomy, thank you, Jeff. You're a great partner to be with us. I know you've inspired the young guys. Now you've come and done Centonomy 101. You're an alumni. Jeff, uh, do not, do not... Uh, hang up on me the next time I call you, you should see. Just go through the <laughs> comments and see if you can be able to respond to them as we go. So, okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff. Okay. God bless you. Thanks, Odaka. Pleasure being uh, here. Very, very good to see you, bro. Um, so now, ladies and gentlemen, I told you, we are in the midst uh, of an opportunity that we didn't have before, which is to learn to assimilate and to begin to implement the things that we're learning. If you are like me, I have my pen, my paper, I am taking notes. I hope you are too. Uh, I got those points that you were talking about at the very beginning. Can you handle it? Um, what are the things uh, that you're willing to give up, the relational issues, and then some of those choices that we have to make? Brilliant. As you were talking, Jeff, uh, some people from different faiths were, were, were typing in. There's, uh, there's someone who typed in a message here, Wedaka. If I'm a Muslim, can I be able to come into this class because of the investments that you talk about halal? Let me just speak about this. The principles of wealth creation apply across the board. Let me give you an example. Let me just open it up here. Um, what we have been doing, especially around um, the classes that we go through, the modules that you're able to go through. I just want to put it up there. The principle of time value of money, we often talk about the compounding returns. And anytime people hear compounding returns, especially Muslims, you hear about, you think about interest rates. And so you wonder, ah, is that for me? The principle actually works even in other areas of life. Let me give you an example. I know it is, um, it is possible that you might want to invest in real estate. So if you buy a piece of land, 
that piece of land is gaining in value at a compounding rate. So you need to understand the principles of compounding return, even as you get into areas such as land valuation, even as you get into other areas, as you think about business, for instance, in business where a business is growing at a certain rate over time. So for those who are worried about that, don't worry about it. You have many Muslims coming through the class where you're able to understand the principle and apply that principle to the investment that you are comfortable with. And that's what we talk about even as we go through this. So I'm really, really excited that we've been able to have that. As I mentioned before, you can be able to make those payments now for the class. Um, they're available right now. Remember, it's the class starts on the 7th of September. You only come for one class per week. We offer the same class four times in a week, the same class. So where you saw, for instance, personal money management module one there, it is repeated four times in the week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 6 p.m. East African time, and on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. East African time, a time like this, so that you have a bit of flexibility should you miss the class that you had signed up for. That's what makes it really good. So you only come once, and it's for two and a half hours, and you'll be given the, the manual, be given uh, tools that you're going to use as you're going to work through that. Please do make that registration now. It's only 500 shillings or $5 if you're going to pay that registration today because of the open day offer that we have. We often give it because you have given us your time. Please do make that registration right now, even as you go into it. We have been learning, learning, learning as I have. I am being challenged now on what I'm willing to do, even on the issues that we're going to deal with here. So uh, next up, one of my dear friends, um, Dr. Caroline, how are you doing? If you're if you out there, please switch on your camera so that you can join me up on the screen. Uh, Dr. Caroline Joki is an amazing, amazing speaker. We met in Nakuru a couple of years back. She was in class. When we started the class, she end up, ended up being one of the co-facilitators. We, we would have deep, deep discussions within that session. Afterwards, she gave a short speech uh, at one of our open days like this, and her video went viral. I think it's one of our biggest videos, over 200,000 views because of the principles that she has uh, shared with us. Uh, she's, she came through the program and has come back to share what has happened in her life so far and that abundance mindset that's out there. Mm. Dr. Caroline, how are you doing? Waitaka, Mwalimu, how are you? Mzuri, mzuri, mzuri sana. Can you hear uh, me so well? Yeah. I can hear you loud and clear. I want to put you up on the screen so everyone can see you. Karibu sana. I'm, I can't wait to hear again. Let's see if this video can go as viral as the last one. <laughs> All right. No I'm pressure, no pressure. All right, I'm a teacher, so we will use PowerPoint. Can I share my screen? You sure Thank can, you. go ahead. All right. I'm using a new device. Forgive me if I falter. So desktop, share, there. I to mend or happy. All right. Let me minimize that. Sorry. Let me let me just minimize this and uh, share my screen. Are you seeing my screen? Oh, Dr. Caroline, sorry, I, I was speaking and you're not hearing me. It's the red X. Sorry, there. Ah, there we go. All right, yep. you can see my screen? Yes. Good, fantastic. Then I play. There we are. All right. I know why that I take a lot of time today. I'll keep my time, by the way. Excellent. So everybody can, can, can see my screen, I suppose. Huh? Yes, All right. we can. Um, thank you so much, Jacqueline and Jeff. In fact, you've mentioned most of the things on this screen. Huh? Uh, I liked one question. So after you attend Scientonomy, I know you go there because maybe you want to create wealth. And then after you create wealth, then what? Can you handle that abundance? Why? Let me tell you my experience. <laughs> so 
I have asked a question, right? It's important. How lit financially literate are you? I'm a centenary alumni. Here's my book. Eh? And I have attended 101. All right, I'm just trying to change to the next screen. Eh? How do you change this thing? One minute. Waidaka. Yes. I'm going to go to the next screen and it's not going. Now tell me um, which one to press. That's a very good question. Um, <laughs> if you can if you can hover your your mouse over the screen and just click with the with the there. Yeah. There, there you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, you click inside there. Yeah. All yes, right. Yes, yes. I'm going to share a very personal story. How I lost my money. Yeah. How do you um, you get money and then you have to take care of it? This is not news. Jeff, wherever you are, if you're still here, you have been reporting these things on the news. Huh? Brazil Bitcoin scheme goes down with Kenyans cash. Uh -huh. Kenyans lose millions. That is Nairobi news. Ponzi scam. The business daily right there with the CMA advising people not to invest in certain uh, entities. So back to me. I started my personal finance journey in 2017. Personal finance, I did Centonomy 101. We were taught about how to budget, prepare for emergency funds, the time value of money. We even learned how to keep our capitals, our money that we don't want to lose in safe havens, treasury bonds, treasury bills. And uh, we were also touched a little bit on slightly higher risks, uh, investments where we want to grow our money. These were the ones called collective investment schemes and unit trusts. And then finally, you go to module two, which is now property and entrepreneurship. I cannot emphasize how important it is to go in this order. I'll equate this order to this thing here called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You cannot start saying you have self-actualized if you're still looking for physiological needs. There's no way you're going to start saying I'm self-actualizing. Sembuse entrepreneurship. If you are still doing fast personal finance, please do that one first eh? before you start thinking of entrepreneurship. So my journey started in 2017 and I felt uh -huh, I have been able to do what you call treasury bills, fixed bonds and everything. Now it's time for me to do what we call collective investment schemes. And I enlisted in some of them, all right? And things were going on well until disaster struck. Now, let me just, uh, yeah. So how, what is a collective investment scheme? Some may ask, eh? you will be taught. It is a financial product where money from a number of different investors is pooled and invested by a fund manager, okay? So they use their expertise to maximize their, your returns and spread your risk. So if you don't know how to invest these things in the market, these people do it for you. How did I choose my collective investment scheme? This particular one, which was a disaster. What I looked at and what I should have looked at, where? Where these people are beautiful offices. Me, I don't name names here, yeah? Beautiful adverts, beautiful smart agents. They had beautiful language, by the way. Queen's language, eh? Not this English we speak here. <laughs> and they had attractive interest rates, eh? You see, I'm looking for higher interest rates. These are the collective investment schemes are giving me 9%. This is during COVID. I so even had packages of 20%. Who cannot be attracted to that? They take you to see the beehive of activities in their projects. No, 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 way. These people are legit. Eh? That's the name we like using. They're legit. What other people told me about them? Well, they look like they've been around for long. They're okay. Honey was Zuri, Wakosawa. And they had so many products with different names that are just confusing. All right? To a layman. What should I have looked at? Look at what I looked at. Now, when I placed this thing to my colleagues, eh, many of them told me, Ay, Joki Bana, Sentonomi alumni, how do you fall prey to such? And then I told them, Sawa, Kusabu, you did not fall prey, you, you know better. What did you look at? So that like, next time I don't get into such a mess. They told me the following things. These are people who are investing in CISs already. Some are even five years in. I asked them, what did you look at when looking for these things? Ah, these people have been around for long. They are stable. Tunawajua, stable. They're legit. 
I have never had anything bad about them. My brother has been with them for years and they returned his money. So me, I think they are okay. I have been with them for five years now and so far so good. I don't know what that means. <laughs> they are a reputable company, this I know. These are answers I'm getting from people who are already investing in their CISs, okay? And then there are those ones who never wanted to hear anything about them. Risk averse because of not having information or just their own opinion, which I respect, okay? And these are the reasons why they told me this. I don't invest in such things. I only do government bonds because they are more secure. I only buy land. All those other people are conmen. Ah, what can I know how? Let nobody cheat you that they can grow your money for you. You work for your money. I do not like get rich quick schemes like those, please. Eh? I am not, I am old. I don't have shock absorbers for money losing schemes. <laughs> Very genuine concerns, okay? I, and I, I somewhat simple and straightforward. I don't like I don't like risks with my money. All right, so I, I don't do such things. Okay, and you can see the varied reasons Kenyans give us. Now let's come back to me. The chronology of events after I invested in my collective investment scheme. This is the email I received. Ole why shock on me. Our investment portfolio continues to face challenges with the cash flows into the projects remaining low. The sale of assets is also taking a long time, and that is why we have be seen a continued delay in payment of interest and capital. First of all, I posed there. Where? At a capital yangu, hisipatiwi. We are looking at how to turn around the portfolio, and over this period, payouts of, out of the real estate products remain low. And I asked myself, uh, Kwani, my money was invested in real estate. By the way, where was my investment taken? Was it just taken to real estate? And many questions came to my mind. What type of CIS did I invest in? Is it a special fund that placed 100% of investors' money in real estate? That's what I came to realize. After Nimesha Eka Muhori Kwa contract, this means that my risk was not spread. It was anything that hit the real estate sector was going to hit me hard because my real estate was fully invested in 100% real estate. I mean, my investment. So these are answers I'm getting after I've written the contract. What was the chronology of events after investing? Everybody has seen this. Eh? Capital Markets Authority warning people do not invest in products like this. And I started asking myself, Hiya, is my, where I invested? Is it regulated? Am I regulated? Kuna endaje? <laughs> so, <laughs> I inquired what my product is, and this is the information I was given, that my product actually is not a regulated product. And I actually went to ask myself, who is the regulator? And I even went and combed through the Capital Markets Authority guidelines to see who are regulated, who are not, what products are not regulated. Hey, I was learning on job. It's painful to learn on job. Eh? I asked myself so many questions, surely. Oh, did St. Onomi prepare me enough? I am an alumni eh? to, my, to, to invest in a CIS. How did this happen, surely? And I opened this book. Eh? I wanted to call Mwalimo first of all, but I said, hey, wait, let me first get my facts right. I opened this book here. Wait, well, that can allow me to, I know this is copyrighted material, but I, I need to emphasize the point. Eh? This is the page 58 of our books. Eh? Introduction to investments, introduction and basics, bonds, unit trusts demystified, equities. And number three caught my eyes, even the topic, unit trusts demystified, because they are a mystery to so many people. Even the topic tells you all. And I opened this book of mine. Eh? This is Centonomy 2017. These things are happening in 2020. This page hit me, page 70. You know, this page just, I looked at this page, this page looked at me, we looked at each other, and I had so many questions. Eh? I would have shown that's not my handwriting, but people who know my handwriting, notes, by the way. Yeah? You see there are a picture of many people who have money to invest. And you can see where they want to invest huh? in the market, but they don't know how to. So this is where the unit manager, the unit trust or the fund manager comes in to invest for you. This is what you call a CIS. 
And in fact, I've read written there, this is the legal structure of your CIS. And you can see those terms coming there. Hmm? Fund manager again, custodian, trustee, auditor, regulator. Who is it? Where? <laughs> Have you even asked written there with a viral? Ask where is your money being invested ultimately? This is just an extract of my one of those um, disastrous uh, <laughs> um, agreements that I wrote. And it's even the person giving you the agreement is giving you very sound advice. This is a private offer, it's not a, a regulated product. And they even give you very sound product. If you have any, any advice, if you have any doubts about the contents of this communication, can you please consult a person who specializes in advising on these offers of investment solution? And I remembered this quote by Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad, seek expertise. Don't try to be an expert. Eh? I should have taken this agreement to Mwalimu here, ni Mwambie Luke. Eh? Is this okay? Can I invest? You have seen this look. Please. This is what I looked at. What should I have looked at? Eh? And I remembered what I've asked all those colleagues of mine who are already in CISs, the answers they are giving me. Surely, are you heading the same road as me? Learn from me. Stop getting in there and then you learn from experience. It's painful. I should have asked. What is the legal structure of my CIS? Like I was taught in St. Anna 101. Who is the auditor of your firm? Who is your fund manager? Who is the custodian and who is your trustee? By the way, are you regulated? Who is your regulator? What type of CIS is this you're giving me? Is it a money market fund, an equity, a balanced fund, a fixed income? I'm an easy less special. I'm going to expose my investment to 100% risk. These are the questions. You should be invest. You should be asking when you're in a CIS. Not my brother got his money back. They are legit. They've been around. Labish. <laughs> that is on a light note. Okay. These are the questions you should be asking. And they are there in Saint Anthony 101. Why I didn't hear this uh, advice is a story for another day. So, so I started asking myself, surely, what is happening in Kenya here? And this. This thing is a clip from the Daily Nation. What is happening to Kenya? Where is Kenya becoming a playground for investment con artists? I don't know how legit, how accurate that uh, topic is, but uh, catchy topics uh, drive sales eh? in media. Uh, we know. That is the very catching uh, headline over there. And I said, asking myself, how financially literate is the average investor in Kenya? Because I want to invest to Kona Pesa and Dio, Tuna Pispeleka. How? Financially literate are you to handle this kind of investments? Could this be the reason why you are becoming playgrounds? And you're seeing billions of shillings worth of losses, few thousand billions. And they're not stopping. In fact, even there's another one in Metokezea, even Majuzi. Kwanini to Nangia Mashimo, even. Are we financially literate? It's just a question. The drama goes on. Aisha, all this, look at the standard. Ndio huh? hiyo. I asked myself now, as an investor, what am I doing to prevent this in the future? Because it's happening to other Kenyans, you can see this. It is happening to me. What steps am I taking? Do I blame Kenya? You know, there's so many blame games going on. Eh? And I'm not talking from a point of privilege here. I'm a victim also. So I'm not criticizing anybody. We are you know, blame games. We were conned by how to not buy. And I'm not absolving them from, from bad manners. They are conning, they should not do that. But seriously, we were conned. The regulator is asleep. Hmm? In Kenya, some are saying that this is Kenya, you should know Kenya. Justice is loose, is elusive where money has been poured. I to blame Hadilini. What steps are you taking? You know, this is where now you need to change your mindset. Eh? Don't exteriorize your failures and internalize your, your successes. All of them are a product of your own doing. You succeed, it's you who made an effort. If you fail, where did you go wrong? Why did you make that mistake? Let's stop exteriorizing these failures and do something. Now, what is the cost of investing in a financial course? Stroke consulting an expert versus the risk of losing your wealth, your hard earned wealth through a bad investment decision. I will tell you today, I lost 15 times the cost of a centonomy class. 
for not consulting an expert. Are you waiting to go do, down that road? If you don't want to arm yourself with information through a financial literacy class, can you be ready to pay an expert to give you this information? And they're not cheap, but you stand to risk more by not doing so. And I remembered this humbly. Did you know that Syntonomy uses experts in related fields for their modules? They don't just pick anybody. And they offer free consultation to alumni. I know you have many questions to ask me. Daniel, let's go again. It is painful to learn from experience that to, than to learn from the experienced or from your mistakes. And I'd like, this is my second last slide. This iceberg over here of success or what you're calling abundance, that's omefika abundance, Sindio. That one is not important. The big one is that one under the water. That is what people don't tell you. You see somebody, yes, lifestyle is good. They are doing fine. You only see that illusion there. The bigger picture is down there. They don't tell you the failures, the persistence, the goals, the sacrifice they had to go through. I am here to share my failure today. I hope I will have taught at least one more person to be vigilant and to take action and not to blame other people. Syntonomy 101 started, starts off with a quote. You cannot solve a problem with the same mind that created it. Come away unangoje a manner from heaven to make it succeed. You will also blame the same manner for not falling when you fail. And finally, what I learned from Syntonomy 101 is that it builds a strong sense of self. Your mentality and confidence in self comes out. You become comfortable with failure but also with success. That's what the mindset teaches you. You become risk averse and you stop passing opportunities because of fear of failing. You own your failures and your successes. I've clearly shown you it's, it's lacking. It's lacking in Kenya. It's lacking among us. You learn to value positive self-criticism. Yeah, you have hit a dead end somewhere. Do you just say to hell with all this? Or you ask yourself, where did I go wrong? And what can I co uh, correct? So that in future I don't go through this again. Huh? And you become immune to negative criticism. Negative criticism is criticism that does not build you, all right? You become self-motivated. And this is what Jeff was talking about. Eh? What motivates you? Is it money? And do you have resilience to handle your abundance? All those regulations, you have to read them. Your personal expectations become realistic. See you come available now and danga social media and you misrepresent yourself. I know reality is far from reality. And people can misrepresent themselves through adverts. Get connected with the real world. Out here is a jungle. You get money. People are looking for that money. You have to be careful also. The abundance mindset is so much. Finally, finally, Waitaka. I think I've kept to my time. What difficulties do I face when mentoring young upcoming professionals? And thank you so much, my young mentees who I have joined today. I can see you. This is the problem me I'm having it. And I'm so happy. There is somebody, I've even written her name. Let me see the name. Um, Anne Thibu, if you are there. I saw you wrote a very important thing. Huh? It's true. What problems do I have with my younger colleagues nowadays when I'm trying to mentor them? Scarcity mindset. This is what we need to change. I'm getting young people and they want to work for money. You can never get motivated like that. Eh? They are self-entitled. Oh, idea to What do you mean? The government does not owe you. The wealthy don't owe you. The world does not owe you. You need to change that. Eh? Don't be self-entitled. You have to put in effort to gain something. You trade your time for money and you have no time for useful relationships as Jeff pointed out. People's skills, building people's skills, networking, how not time, even for attending autonomy or anything else. Yet you want to build yourself. How? You, have, you view problems as difficulties rather than learning opportunities. 
You want to outdo others, what you're seeing on social media. Who told you that's the truth? You have a weak sense of self and personal values, all right? Scarcity mindset, driven by fear, motivated by immediate self-gratification. That's why you want to reach, get rich quick systems. Eh? My interest rates are 20%. Eh? In an abundance mindset, you start learning to work because you like it or to gain experience and somehow the money follows. You're not self-entitled. You relate your outcomes directly to your efforts. Time is money. That's what you are told. You create time for useful relationships and networks, which eventually help you. That is what you call an abundance mindset. You don't view your difficulties as problems. Huh? No, they are learning opportunities. And next time you'll be a big step ahead of the others. You believe in equity and allowing others around you to grow. You have a strong sense of self and personal values. And you know your weaknesses. You're comfortable when you fail and also when you succeed. And you're self-motivated and you have the ability to delay self-gratification, to focus on your goal. That is what I learned from Centon on 101. Thank you. Wah, 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 wah. You should have seen me hovering over, over the mic, just ready to take over because it was getting too, too hot in here, Dr. Caroline. <laughs> I don't know what to say because it is, you know, I mean, your honesty as you were sharing what you're thinking through, your experience was painful even just to listen. You know, you're just like, how is it that this, we get into these positions that we find ourselves in? But the ability to be able to look back and say, hey, this, this is the reason that we got into that position, that's just amazing. As you mentioned, when we get into the investment classes, we talk about investment in treasury bills and bonds. What are they? How do they work? Who manages them? As you said, who is the one who's a regulator in these spaces? How do unit trusts work? What do you use as a measure to know whether this is an investment that you want to get into or not? And as, as Dr. Caroline mentioned, the, the people who are teaching, it's not, ask her. It was not me training in these areas. We go into the market and we look for stockbrokers. We look for people in the, uh, who are investment experts. We look for people who are in that space who have been trading in stocks, in bonds, in unit trusts for years so that they can give you the experience. And unlike, uh, they're not coming to sell you anything. They're coming to tell you what their experience has been. That's where the difference is. And you saw the notes from, it's okay, Dr. Caroline. It's good that people can see we actually go in detail through what you're, what you're experiencing here. Thank you for sharing that. So that now when you are approached and you can see you have the correct questions to ask, you even have that direct line um, to the trainers just to ask them, hey, what do you think about this? And you can be able to get that response. Why fall into the same traps that we have found ourselves in and blame everybody else? This is what we're Dr. Caroline, wow. Wow, wow. I have a feeling it might go viral again. I hope it will so that people can hear and grow. There's so many different things that have come through. People are just saying, uh, powerful, honest, thank you, Doc. Thank you for sharing what the real thing is. Thank you for sharing your personal experience. I think that's really what is powerful out of what we're talking about here. Um, I think there was a question I saw, maybe you can share. Other than that failure last, last uh, year in, in your investment, have you had any success since you, you joined the Centonomy class? Oh, yes. I have other successes. I think I put it in the first uh, slide huh? and you saw my journey going upwards. Yeah. I came out of debt. It's in my first slide. Maybe you can share the slide. I came out of debt. I organized my finances. I have an emergency fund. I learned how to trade in government papers. Nowadays, I know which bonds to go for, treasury bills, government papers. I have other CISs in which I've invested in, which I did not even ask the right question. Nila do Bahati. Like in Hindi or Lijipata and Nikaji Kwa. All right. So as I said, that iceberg, that tip, I decided to leave that one. Not that it's not there, it's there. There have been successes. It's not the important part. And you can lose money just like that. Amazing, amazing as always. Thank you so much, Dr. Caroline Joki. 
Uh, you have done an excellent job in sharing exactly the experiences that are there. I'm seeing some people asking some questions about when the class is beginning. Uh, it is starting on the 7th of September, so get yourselves ready. Uh, we start on the 7th of September, 2021. You come for one class per week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Saturday. So either of one of those classes, you come in for it. Register today because you come for the open day. We often, we always give a discount for those who come into a session like this because we want to make sure as many people as are empowered as possible. The special offer is 500 shillings or $5 if you're outside of Kenya. Um, the total fees, um, 39,000 that you can see there. And you can also pay that in installments as you can see on the screen. Once you register, we will reach out to you and you'll get all the details of the class schedule, the timings where you can be able to get all that information from our team. In case you have any specific questions that you want to ask at the bottom of the screen there, you can see Maureen at centonomy.com. Just email Maureen, she'll be able to assist you. You can also call that number plus 254-7000-36433. As I said, take a quick screenshot so that you can get all the information here. This video will be available on all our social media, that is Facebook and YouTube, uh, immediately after this session. So if you, if you want to go back and you missed something at the beginning of this session, you'll be able to go back and watch it, share it with your friends, share it far and wide, so that as many people can be empowered by what you're hearing today. I, I'm telling you, I've turned pages. I've been writing notes. I'm telling you, I'm on my third page of notes so far. Every time I come into these sessions, I learn as well. We can always get better at what we're doing when we accept the challenge of what we're going to go through. So I'm encouraging you, please accept that challenge. I saw a question about what, what is it, uh, who should come for this Antonomy 101 program? So you can understand we train on personal financial management across all ages, all right? So uh, this past week, we've actually been running our teens boot camp, which runs during the holidays. Um, age 13 to 17, as young as possible, get this information into your hands. In case you have a teenager or you're a teenager who wants to get to learn this information, reach out to esther at centonomy.com. You can register for that now. We've got the Centonomy Campus Edition for students age 17 to 24. In case you're interested in that, you have a relative who's going to be there, you please do reach out to esther at centonomy.com. And for this program that we're telling you about, if you're 25 plus, uh, the special offer for registration, because you have shown up today for Centonomy 101, is only 500 shillings. You'll reach out to Maureen at centonomy.com. Our next speaker is a dear friend. Let me tell you um, how far we go back. Cindy Organa, who is not just a journalist, not just a fundraiser, she's an all round great human being. She was responsible for my first job coming out of campus. Cindy, I don't know if you remember, but you hooked me up with someone to go for an interview uh, at a radio station. Radio, I don't know if you remember, Cindy, but you are I responsible remember for getting me well. my, my first job coming out of campus, and I'm, ent I'm eternally grateful for that. And so I want to hear of your abundance journey, especially after coming through this Antonomy 101 class. I hope it was worth your time and your energy. You want to hear about that. Karibu, karibu sana, Cindy. Thank you so much, Waizaka. Um, it's such an honor and privilege for me to be here because um, what I have learned at Centonomy, gosh, where do I even begin? <laughs> well, first of all, kudos to the speakers who came before me. I also have my notes here, I was just jotting them down. Um, you know, uh, Caroline has mentioned some very, very pertinent, uh, you know, points um, in, in terms of just, and I like what she said when she said, um, you can't really blame anyone. As I guess as Kenyans, we like doing that whole blame game. Um, you blame your parents, maybe for the schools they taught, they took you to. Um, even those who blame their parents who are civil servants for not stealing when everybody else was stealing. <laughs> and so you find yourself in a place where you've got taxes, you've got children, and you have no financial um, you know, education, and that is where I am from. So I don't have a slide. I like speaking from the heart, and I hope that uh, my experience can can motivate anybody, especially if you're a late bloomer like me. So let me give you a bit of my late bloomer journey. 
So I'm Cindy Ogan, I'm a fundraiser. I'm a, some of you might know me as a journalist. I was in radio for a while. Um, way back and I were at a Christian radio station. And then I moved to uh, Royal Media Services where I was working as a radio presenter for Hot 96. I worked there for four years and I got the development bug. So I moved to Faraja Cancer Support Trust as a fundraising manager. And I moved into communications. So I do fundraising and communications for Faraja. It's been the last six, seven years. I have been working um, from the time I was 18. Um, the moment I finished Form 4, I came from the kind of family where you just had to have money. <laughs> you know, black tax is very real. So I came from the kind of family where at any given point, somebody would come and ask for support. And I just felt that the burden was too much for my mom and dad. And I was very young and ambitious. And I started my journey into making money from the time I was 18. So I used to sell mandazis, I used to sell juice, I used to hawk them door to door. Um, even though there was a time when we had that spell, um, when we were working together with Waibaka, I tried to sell sandwiches. Everywhere I have worked, I've always tried to make money. Um, it's a good thing because I am not afraid of hard work. And if I tally the amount of money that I'm making, I should honestly own the 180 million house, you know, that Jacqueline was talking about in Kitale. But the thing that I did not have is I'm very good at making money. I'm not good at how that money can make itself. So again, it's a lot to do with how you are raised. I would make the money and I would spend it. I would give it out so that I can help somebody else. Or I would just live my best life. <laughs> whatever that would be. So if there was something that I wanted, not needed, if there was something that I wanted, I'd go out and buy it. I was never afraid of the price tag. I'd buy the most expensive perfume. That's my thing. I like scents. I like experiences. I'd go on holiday at the drop of a hat. And if I look back at my 35 plus years, I have to thank God that I have been in constant places where I have made money. And in some places, I have made very good money. But until the wake up call that we all got, which is COVID, is when I realized that I have no financial education whatsoever. So I'm going to give you, because I understand I have 20 minutes and I'm a bit of a talker. I'm just going to take you back to my journey um, in terms of being a late bloomer. So I found myself in the position where at 26, I was a single mother to a fantastic young man. And I had to move out of my mother's house and I was living hand to mouth. So I've been thrown into this world where I'm paying rent, where because of the pressure of media, by the way, it's so for real um, about, you know, public likes and FOMO. Yes, I had to buy a car. I didn't have money. So what did I do? I got a loan. My first loan. Um, I bought a car. Had I done syntonomy at that point, I would realize that there is no shame in eating humble pie and staying at my mother's house, raising my child, having that support system, getting the loan and getting the loan for an investment that would make me returns. And we're talking about 11 years because it's 11 years now. And you can imagine how the economy was then and the economy now. But I was working on what, uh, you know, my Neanderthal sort of instincts. You don't want to ask people what they're doing because, first of all, there's this fear of not making it. And it is a fear that we give ourselves. Nobody has told you you've not made it. These are the private conversations you have with yourself. And you sit down, you're like, oh, you've made a mistake. You're not a good person. So you have to make it right to society, whoever society is. And it is a benchmark that you set for yourself that really puts unnecessary pressure. And it's important that we're talking about living your life in abundance. Because if you don't get your mind right, you will end up making decisions, some of them financial, some of them emotional that will affect your finances. And when you're at a place where I am right now, when you're clear-headed and you have the necessary tools to move from point A to B, you will realize that had you gotten your mind right, had you been aligned in your thoughts and your actions, then probably you would see the fruit of it in your financial investment. So do not take it for granted. A lack of emotional quotient 
can affect your finances, right? If you don't have that emotional know-how to know that um, uh, you can learn from your mistakes as we have we've just listened to it. You can, you know, from one point to another slowly in your own journey without comparing yourself to other people that you can actually make very sound investments. So off bat, I'm making horrible decisions and I'm getting more and more into debt. Remember, I'm still into the black tax hole. So I am borrowing money to pay debts. And that followed me 10 years into now I'm married um, and I have two more kids. So I have three children and it just became an accumulation of debt. And when I sat down with my now husband and we went back to the very genesis of it and I discovered it is that one loan you know, we take things so much for granted when uh, we, you make what is called a myopic decision, one mistake that can really, you know, compound um, the sort of effect. So it's just that one loan and how that one loan led to another loan and another loan and another loan. Am I, I didn't see, I don't see myself on the screen. Can I still be seen? Oh, great. <laughs> So it moved to another loan and another loan. And now I'm married and I have three children and then COVID came. So the things that I was, the thing that I was using to service these loans was no longer there. Um, we went through what most people went through, a salary cut. Uh, my husband is in the sports field. And um, if you're in sports or anything outdoors, they are the most hit. Um, industry due to COVID, sports, hospitality, uh, that's hospitality and tourism, and also real estate, people who rent. So he was really hardly hit. He had so many events lined up. They were canceled because we went into lockdown. And then when the restrictions were eased, sporting activity was totally canceled, except the athletes who are training for the Olympics. So our regular sources of income were completely diminished. And between him and I, we have no sound advice in terms of how we can manage our finances, how we can take care of our children. We have two kids under the age of three. It just became a mountain of mistake. So by the time I was reaching out to Waidaka Centronomy and I was joining the class, I was at a point where I felt so ashamed you know, when people see you on TV, they think, especially with me, I have a very, and I appreciate this, I get it from my father, so it is genetic, a very loud and boisterous voice. And when you see me on TV, you're like, this girl has it all together. <laughs> and I didn't have it all together. I was ashamed. I came into class and I'm listening to testimonies of people who are much younger than me talking about owning their own house. And I'm still paying rent. I'm talking, uh, people are sharing and saying, oh, you know, because the first class in Centronomy, you're asked, do you know your money's in your pocket? And we are asked to equate what we did over the weekend. And people are talking about spending 25,000 shillings in drinks. And I'm ashamed because I can't afford 25,000 shillings in drinks. <laughs> I ball on a budget. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I came at a point where I was so ashamed where I felt like I'm such a late bloomer, I should have gotten it right. And you know, you beat yourself up. You're like, Cindy, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do this? All that money you made before you got into, you know, before life happened, before the demand on your life was too much, when I still had one child, when, you know, I could easily do three, four, five jobs. Right now, even the two jobs that you're getting, you're sort of holding on to it, you know, when the market was better. Why didn't you, why didn't you, why didn't you? And it is actually the class that we did on our mind that freed me from that guilt. When I was doing the first class and the second class, I was just getting more and more depressed because, you know, there's this whole inflation calculator and you're told, write down all your dreams. How much will they cost? All right. That is the amount of money you need to raise in your lifetime. You're thinking, I don't have 34 million shillings. Where am I going to get it from? <laughs> I can barely put together a million shillings. And when you're asked tough questions like, 
can you raise a lump sum in 48 hours? And I was like, I cannot. I can't raise a million shillings in 48 hours. I would have to be the typical people I go and I do fundraisers and people are like, oh, my celeb wanna pele kanga pesa yao wapi? <laughs> it's just lack of financial advice. When we did the class on our abundance mindset is when I realized what the problem was from the very beginning. Yes, it would help a lot if I had sound financial advice at the beginning. But there was something that was also not right with my bank account, and that was my mind. I didn't think that I deserved to be a millionaire. I would look at other people bowling and go like, oh, that's so nice. Um, I would drive in Karen and look at those houses and say, oh, that's so nice for them. You know, I would only look at the section of the housing finance, HFCK, if you go to the website, I'd only look at the houses that I felt I deserved, the really tiny shoebox sort of houses. Even window shopping for cars, I'd go like, oh, that's such a nice car. I probably will never afford to drive a car like that, you know? And I'd look at the schools that my friends are taking their kids with, and I'm like, I wish I had the kind of money to take my sons to the schools that I have in mind. Because I'm a ben I benefited from having a very good education. And there was a time when I sat, you know, I, the meditation that we're talking about and I felt I, I can't afford to take my kids to this kind of private school because I messed up. So let me just make do, make sure they're alive and I do the best I can. And hopefully if I die, I go to hell. But after that class, I was like, you mean, excuse me? You mean I can get all that? You mean I deserve? You mean I'm still worthy? You mean if I organize myself now and I do it right, that I can get it then, regardless of my age? Please note, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not ashamed to say I'm 35 plus. I'm not going to tell you how many pluses, but just know I'm not youth. <laughs> I don't fall under the youth category. I'm 35 plus. So there are jobs and opportunities that are not you know i can't get because of my age but that is notwithstanding there is the knowledge that i have received from centonium something small like what i do with my money every day the reason i'm sharing my personal experiences is because i know there are lots of people who are like me who don't see anything wrong with buying lunch every day at work you know that thing of kwambi i'm really poly who you guys i am a river lake nylot i love living the good life not soft life that we're talking about <laughs> it will make me comfortable i will spend money and i will not care i will go to an expensive restaurant i will buy myself a good bottle of wine you know and if it's i don't feel like cooking we're on the phone we have all this app kids who wants kfc yeah you know and i feel like i'm treating my children and all these small things that I'm doing are actually eating away at their future. So it was such an eye opener because it's what Centonomy 101 does is that it gives you very practical tools on how to live your life in abundance and how to live your life for the future. And when I say for the future, the investment that you make is not only for your children, but your children's children. At the end of the class, you end up feeling like I am in this world for a bigger purpose other than being a mom and being a wife. I can actually impact people um, with my knowledge, with my skills. Um, it also made me realize that I am more talented than I give myself credit for. Um, I appreciate that the people listening come from different faith. I'm only quoting the Bible because it is a spiritual book that I am more acquainted with, but I respect all religions. When, you know, when God told Moses to go and free the Israelites, Moses had all these excuses. And the first thing God told him is what is in your hand? And it actually made me sit down and realize I have a lot in my hand. I'm very skilled. Um, I'm a good orator, if I do say so myself. Let me know in the chat section. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good orator and I also have such a passion for helping people because I am a product of my mistakes. I made so many mistakes when I was younger and I'm not ashamed to talk about them because I am who I am right now because of my mistakes. Had I not made my mistakes, I would probably not even be alive. So I appreciate 
the process that I had to get to, to get here. So that's sort of, um, why am I talking about this? You will learn in class that there is a lot, there are other ways that you can make money. It is not just the rat race that we're told you have to go work hard and get a good job. You can actually get residual income from your God-given gifts and talents. You just have to believe that you deserve and you have to believe that you can do it. And you have to put in the work. Jeff said something very important. If you want to be, I'm also like Waidaka, like you, I am so into athletics. I have so much respect for athletes um, and sportsmen and women. That's why I married one. They put in so much hard work. Like to be an athlete is not physical, it's mental. For them to run a marathon, for them to train, it first starts with their mind. And it's true, they do have coaches to tell them, no, 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 that thinking is not right. If you go on the treadmill with that thought, you will pull a hamstring because you will be overworking your body to compensate for what your mind is not giving your soul. It has to be in total alignment. So get your mind right, get your heart right, and get your money right. And I know right now, if you look at the registration fee, you can go like, Nahi <laughs> corona. <laughs> but trust me, this investment is going to change your life, the life of your children, your children's children, your family. As Africans, we don't believe in creating generational wealth. We believe in taking care of our own for now, and then they will sort themselves after. Do you know, regardless of where you are, even if you're at the stage in which I am, where I've been driving the same car for six years, you know? where I'm still paying rent, where I am in the process. Please note that I'm saying in the process, and this process has started because I did some tournament, where I'm in the process of getting out of debt. Do you know you can do all that and still be in a position to create generational wealth? You just have to want it for yourself, and you just have to want better things for yourself. So it starts with the mind, and then it flows with the pocket. So that is my biggest take out from Centonomy 101. It has, honest to God, changed my life as an individual, my family's life. Um, even the people around me appreciate how I see money. You know, I don't see money the way I used to before. My nose are a bit more because I appreciate that sometimes just this generosity, I'm robbing my children, I'm robbing my future. And it might seem annoying and it's actually very difficult, but with time, the way you train your body when you go to the gym, if you discipline yourself, something like a budget, you can actually stick to a budget and you'll be very shocked. Um, you, at the end of the month, you will not have to you know, rely on all these loans. As we close, um, when somebody goes through Alcoholics Anonymous, every time they stay sober, they're given a coin just to remind them of the amazing feat they've done. My biggest feat, ladies and gentlemen, feel free to clap for me. This is, this is a big one for me. I'm clapping. This is the first time in two years, this month, August, I have not taken a loan, a mobile money loan. For the first time in two years, August is the first month. And that's because I started Centonomy in March, we finished around June. And I started practicing even through the class to manage my money so that at the end of the month, I'm not left with smoke. Then I have to get a loan from them because those are the small things that sort of eat into your money. It feels good. What is today? It feels good on the 7th that I have money. <laughs> yeah. I, know, I used to have cash on the 7th. I would have to get a loan and then that loan you sort of you know stream it till the end of the month so this is a big one for me and i'm so proud of myself and that is because of centonomy one one so thank you so much to all the facilitators why that and your team for putting this in place and i hope i honestly hope that there's somebody watching out there and will sign up for this class because it's honestly life changing asante ni sana yani cindy you should just go through the comments after this please do um, you will see what, what it has meant to people to hear the honest truth.
I think your story is so relatable. You've been so real. And that's what we try and do when we come into a autonomy class. My personal experience was, you mean you can actually save every month? It's possible to actually put money aside every... Did you... It is possible to actually invest every Imagine. month. That Imagine. Where did that cash come from? This is what now I was, I was dealing with in my life. And, and I, I can totally relate. Guys, thank you. Cindy, you're amazing. Keep doing what thank you're you, doing. Man. That honesty makes a huge difference. Um, and thank you for honoring the invitation to come and speak here. Guys, you've heard it from Cindy. I'm not going to waste much more of your time. We had said two hours. We've done pretty well. We're three minutes over. Come on, we can do this, guys. I want you to experience exactly what Cindy has, has told you. I want you to experience the same thing, that you can begin to shift your mindset in your life. Going through the, each one of these modules and all the bonus material, the content that we share, the tools that are shared also in this will begin to shift the way you see yourself, the way you see your money, and the abundant life that is ahead of you. This is the time to do so. When you can manage your money, when you can start investing, we can protect your money with a plan over time. There's a freedom that comes with clearing your debts. There's also a freedom that comes when you take debt for the right thing, because it depends on what, what we're looking at. There's good debt, bad debt, and we discuss that when we talk about debt management. And what Cindy talked about getting out of debt, we give you a system and a plan but again, you, it starts up here in your mind. So guys, don't waste any more time. If you've been listening to us, wherever you are in the world, we've had students from across the world. I've said every continent except for South America and Antarctica. Antarctica, I don't know why, but South America, it's a language barrier. We're going to be doing Portuguese and we're going to be doing Spanish as well so we can bring the whole world into this. The US, North America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, we've had people from all around the world take advantage of this. You can imagine the experiences that you can be able to have once you're able to get into this place. So come in, let's learn together, make that payment today. It's only 500 shillings, $5 to register, and we'll reach out to you with all the information on the classes that you're going to get, get into, how they work. We'll start sharing materials with you so you can begin working now. And for those of you who can't wait till September 7th, because that's when the class is beginning on the 7th of September, that week will start on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday, the same class will be running at that point. As you wait for that date to come, please do pick up a copy of Making Sense by Washek and Duati. It's available pretty much everywhere around the world if you have access to Amazon. If you're in Kenya, all those bookshops are carrying the, the book. You can also get it from us with a small delivery fee, you get it delivered to your house directly from Centonomy. The details are on the screen there. If you are in Uganda, now we are there. Um, and you can see all the details for the various places where you can collect it. Um, and we're going to get the book available as far and wide as possible. We have been so honored that you have given us your time. We really appreciate that you have come through for us. And I pray that it has been helpful to you. Don't just listen to what we've said today. Begin to apply. In the classes, we have over 30 hours of material. And as Cindy said, as Jeff said, as Dr. Njoki said, as Jackie said, it's not complex material. The problem is we can't communicate everything that we want to in a two-hour webinar like this. We can't. But in the class... It's not that you're going to come in and then be, you have to go, it's like you're going back to school. No, it is for application. So take the time, make the commitment. We want to see you in the class coming up. I'm so glad to see everybody from all around the world, across Africa, all the way in Australia. I know we had people from everywhere around the world. Please share this as far and wide as possible. We are able now to begin to work together. We work with organizations as well. So in case you have a company or you work somewhere where you'd like us to come and speak, we've worked with companies across Africa, uh, just empowering their staff members on these same principles. So do reach out to us and we'll be able to assist you with that. Lisa, it's been a pleasure to take you through our open day where the theme has been the abundant mind mindset. As you can see, there's got to be more to life. guys. 
do reach out to us in case you have any queries on fees. Maybe you're outside of Kenya and you're wondering, how do I pay? How do I do this? How do I do this? Don't worry. I'll put up some contacts on the screen so you can reach out to the right person for you. If you're a teenager, you've got a teenager, please reach out to Esther at centonomy.com. If you're in campus, 17 to 24, do reach out to Esther as well. You can make those registrations now. They're coming up soon. She'll give you all the details for that. And if, you, if you've been convinced to join the Centonomy 101 class, make that choice today. Make that uh, investment and reach out to Maureen at centonomy.com. You can see it there on that special offer that we have. And you can reach out to her on plus 254 <coughs> 433. You can see it at the bottom of the screen. This entire webinar is available on our social media after this. So please go check it out on YouTube or Facebook. In case you missed anything, please do be with us. God bless you all. Have a great weekend. From us here at Centonomy, we can only say thank you. Bye, guys.